Attention all shoppers, please be aware of violent Black Friday shoppers and the Batman who's coming to beat them up. Alfred, I need to get a new TV! <laughs> <laughs> Prepare the Bat Anti Black Friday Shopper Spray. <laughs> Which Alfred, it's freezing. Uh, it's, it's, it's Christmas time. No, I mean, the game's literally Which freezing. Which Batman movie was it that was set during Christmas Returns? Uh, Returns. Batman Returns. Ah, uh, yeah. That was the, the second Penguin. 80s one, right? Yeah, that was okay. that was with Penguin yeah. and Michelle Pfeiffer. The second 80s. Yeah, the 1992 that, Yeah, that was the, the one where Tim Burton one. got so... <laughs> that was the one where Tim Burton got so Tim Burton that, that, that like... The, Basically, the, after 89, it was a huge success. Tim Burton said, you want me back? Let me do whatever the hell I want. And Warner said, "Okay, <laughs> what have we done?" <laughs> and, that, and that scared and Tim Burton doing what he whatever he wanted scared Warner so much he got Joel Schumacher and said, "John, everybody knows that the '80s didn't truly end until Smells Like Teen Spirit came out in September 1991." Okay, uh, Schumacher certainly made it's, the Batman movie smell like shoes. So it's kind of like how the '70s didn't end until like 1982. Wait, <laughs> stop, rewind. <laughs> What the fuck does that mean? Shoemaker like, okay. is a name that means shoemaker, obviously. I know, but it's like, what? Hold on, like, what kind of shoe are we talking about Shoes here? Shoes that have been on someone's feet for, for way too long, okay? It doesn't matter the specific brand oh, of shoes. Oh, okay, it smells like worn shoes. Yes. Okay, it's like, you know, because new shoe smells not all right. Wait, you guys smell your shoes to differentiate between new shoe smell and old shoe smell? You can you can tell when the shoe's... Well, when you buy the shoes, they smell different than after you've worn them for a while, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you can't really avoid the new shoe smell when you open the shoe box, can you? Um, but, like, when a shoe is that smelly, you don't need to actually smell it to know that someone's been wearing it too long. And that's oh, how dude, bad my brothers are Batman movies are. My brothers both play soccer, so uh, whenever they come home from a game, they literally have to stuff newspaper into their shoes, because even if they put them down in the hall, like a full flight of stairs away from you, you we can still smell them in like the kitchen mm. when we're eating dinner, and it's like, please, why? Well, why do you, know, you do this? All I can say in favor of Schumacher Batman is praise the Lord for Jim Carrey, whose eternal fate seems to be to always star in serious movies that no one takes seriously unless they're the Truman Show, and to always star in mediocre children's movies where he's the best thing on screen that makes them bearable to watch. Uh, I would actually disagree with uh, what, like, I mean, sure, there's plenty of things where that is true, but uh, the series of unfortunate events movie. He's the worst thing in it because he's, he's being Jim Carrey he's Jim instead Carrey of not Clark, kind of well, yeah, yeah. But you know, um, he's still enjoyable to watch if you shut your brain off to the fact that you're not supposed to like this guy at all. But <laughs> uh, I need to watch the Netflix series of unfortunate events because I honestly like I love Neil Patrick Harris, but I don't really see him as Count Olaf either. So that'll be interesting. Whenever we'll, I get around we'll have to, to see. It seems like when they cast characters as Count Olaf, their pr priority is weirdly to cast someone who they can stick a fake beard on and make him look like the illustrations of Count Olaf more than anything else. Um, yeah. Okay, Batman. I mean, while it's safe to assume the tree would break some of the fall. If he landed on that thing awkwardly, it could have gotten impaled Man, easily. you know, something that would have been actually really cool is if in these early days of Batman, they didn't have all the funky holographic tech. You know? Like, going... I mean, it's just... I mean, it's obviously just reuse from City, but... Well, yeah, I know. It's just like, you know, when Metal Gear Solid 3 happened, they went back... And they didn't have the Soliton radar. <laughs> so, they had. Wait, so what do you what, what do you want Batman to like dial the ham radio <laughs> to, to locate? Alfred, what, give me like, the villains. analog bat computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just just show. Alfred, hand the bat abacus. <laughs> just show the passage. Alfred, turn off the bat phone. I'm trying to get onto the bat internet. <laughs> yeah, show the passage of time by having him use some outdated tech because it's the past. You know, that's all. Right, right. You know, just uh, Alfred, like, turn off the bat modem. I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> do, 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 Game, do, do, games can do <laughs> games can do interesting things with the difference of technology between um be between different time periods. Metal Gear Solid Three solved some pretty obvious design limitations of MGS1 and MGS2 by simply using the prequel excuse to take the Soliton radar out of the equation and make you actually have to be careful. 
Um. <laughs> there was this there was this fan idea for like a prequel Pokemon game where you would play as Professor Oak and you would have to like write down the Pokedex entries on paper and there were like <laughs> less Pokemon and stuff like that. that. Would have been the... interesting, but also way too tedious for Game Freak to ever consider. Um, I mean, uh, Game Freak has no problems throwing away perfectly good game mechanics to replace them with worse ones, because they do that every game, but, you know... Oh, yeah, I, I just mean ourselves. it's one of those things that would blatantly not appeal to kill it to kids. I, I would say, um, though, that to go back to what I was saying about, like, retrofitting... Well, not so much retrofitting, but using older tech in a, in a, in a prequel game, is that Metal Gear Saw at least was clear on the time frame of when Solid One happened, Solid Two, yeah. and Solid Three, or uh, Arkham, the the Arkham series never really gave a clear distinction of what. Yeah, what time what year it was. is this? It's what present it? day. Yeah. It's a it's a common comic books problem. Yeah, but what was present day in Arkham Asylum <laughs> yeah. and City? Yeah. Now, I mean, and how far back it's, is it's, Origins? It's a, it's a similar thing that actually happens with, uh, believe it or not, like soap operas, like General Hospital or Days of Our Lives, <laughs> where they just everything takes place the present day. So you'll have characters who are like eight years old leave for six months because they went to like boarding school or whatever uh... they come back 21 so that they can have like romance subplots and things like you know know? like i'm just thinking of detective conan now which started like decades ago but but like in universe it's like been maybe half a year that's passed um according to the author and yet we've gone from like early 90s 80s tech to having like modern day cell phones <laughs> um inside of that space of time and nobody has aged up at all so <laughs> it's very strange <laughs> you know uh but you know uh, at least Lupin the third has the excuse as for any least seven to seven yeah but but you know um the uh technology differences between time periods can be used for more than just like mechanical things within the game. I remember like really actually liking it when the Resident Evil 2 remake for example had all of the computers in the police station be like these super retro 90s Windows 3.11 ass looking uh, relics and then when you get to the Umbrella Lab everyone is running Windows 10 inexplicably in the 90s <laughs> uh, just to show how futuristic Umbrella is by using modern technology in the past which I thought was an excellent joke <laughs> that I wonder how many people actually noticed uh, without having to be told by someone else. Enigma, I'm... Uh, y- y- you. Speaking of being ahead of the time, uh, Enigma here is is doing that, you know, totally futuristic thing of... Um, of having a still image avatar over audio footage of himself uh, that everyone loves to do on YouTube nowadays. I think he realized that... He wasn't satisfied with the default Twitter egg icon, so... Well, you know, I think he realized... <laughs> he gave himself the Twitter icon with the green question mark on it. Ooh. <laughs> I think he realized Ooh. in test streams that he couldn't precisely control the shadowing over his face, so he just took a photo of himself really dramatically shadowed over <laughs> and made that his chat avatar. Just put it in front of the camera. This footage has been altered in order to hide this person's identity. <laughs> And they set it on the wrong camera, which reveals everything. <laughs> ah, shit. Guy, guy, guy walks in, Bill, is that you? Damn it. <laughs> we, forgot, we forgot to turn on the rainbow neon mosaic. <laughs> but, uh, uh, man, you know, I really like Gotham City's design in the Arkham games. I do kind of wish, like, I, I realize this is totally contradicting my earlier point about the Arkham games having their own, like, visual style and me not being happy that they drew from other Batman media outside of silly, unlockable costumes. But I kind of wish they'd gone a little bit more gothic with it, like the Tim Burton movies did. Maybe not necessarily in that style, but maybe it's because I was introduced to Batman through the animated series and they kind of did that sort of thing too. Well, even if you're just thinking about it in terms of, like, you know, uh, the DC Universe, like, Gotham is supposed to have its own flavor as opposed to something like Metropolis, where Metropolis is very 
uh, very clearly is supposed to be like a shiny, clean New York City. It, 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 yeah, it, it's unique <laughs> a shiny, like clean New York City. Yeah, God, ironically, in a universe that has an actual New York City. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's like yeah, Metropolis is New York City with a shiny coat of paint. Gotham is supposed to be grim, dark New York. Yeah, and, well, you know, I always got more of like a Boston, Philadelphia kind of vibe. Or like a Jersey City kind of vibe from Gotham, where you know, I like think Gotham it's, is specifically supposed to just be a worse New York. I think oh, okay. it's, Never I, mind. I think it's <laughs> just like, like in terms of what you see there. I mean, conceptually, it's worse New York because <laughs> you know, uh, overburdened police department and really high crime rates. But it's also got elements of like every shitty crime-ridden city in America in it somewhere. <laughs> so you know, if you look hard enough, you'll find a large slice of Detroit just magically displaced and sent to the East Coast for some reason. And it also has <laughs> Chicago's train system. And yeah, yeah, but it's just yeah. you can you can show that through the architecture too by having like older styled buildings. I mean, that's what this. Gotham always does, and has really old. Yeah, stuff. which is why I still think that um, despite like actual film quality aside or how well it's aged i think the burton verse at least still had some of the most striking set pieces of gotham yeah. city even if it did look like only 10 people lived in the that like because nolan look it, nolan gotham just nolan looked, was just chicago and pittsburgh yeah, and new york yeah, pretty the, much. the animated you know, I mean, series has that it. uh art deco how do you say it that thing art, bioshock art did okay it's art deco, yeah, art deco. okay it, i was well, pronouncing it, it correctly which, is, which is effectively which is effectively a visual style pertaining to like the 40s yeah so if if they but you know it was obviously limited by the animation budget and how uh, static animated backgrounds, uh, static animation backgrounds work. But if they did that kind of style in a video game like this, it could like be fucking Batman sandbox Bioshock stuff going on, and that would have been amazing. But instead, we just kind of have a city that has some gothic architecture here and there, and it's a little bit disappointing, to be honest. Um, so I kind of wish they'd, you know played up Gotham's unique look a little bit more than they did. That's probably just more to do with an asset thing, because everyone has assets for buildings and stuff. Oh, well, yeah, I know. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Lois, you were talking about earlier about your wishing the t technology look a little older, and uh, Batman just picked up an encrypted data file that's the size of a Trapper Keeper. <laughs> so, oh, that's something. There you go. <laughs> that is something, at least. But, like... We're not going that far back because I'm pretty sure I saw him like looking at an SD card, a large yes, SD it's card. A, it, it, was in, it was a SIM card. Oh, <laughs> a, a large SIM card. SIM card then, but you know, a, a a chip basically. So we're not like we're not like in we're not doing what like some of the really old Batman stuff did and have it have him using computers that had like large cassette tape reels going on. Yeah, but I mean, like, if this is trying to be, like, the past where... Okay, let's assume that this is ten years before Arkham City, okay? Arkham City, like, okay, takes place in, like, what, 2010-ish? So, would we really want, like, Batman finding, like, zip drives on the ground and stuff like that? Zip drives? <laughs> yeah, like, you know. <laughs> I forgot those existed. I'm sorry. I've I only ever too. seen one. I've only ever seen one once in my life at a grandparent's house. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly, actually, I would want to see Batman using like a using his bat zip drive to store his <laughs> 30 megabytes of data. You know, ooh, fancy. Uh, Black Mass has sent uh, another extortion threat. Uh, allow four to six weeks for delivery. <laughs> <laughs> Batman, you have a collect call from Black Mass. If you'd like to accept the charges, no. No. <laughs> Why do I have to accept the charges? He's making the call. <laughs> <laughs> that bastard. <laughs> this is his plan. He's going to just keep collect calling. Hello, me. Batman. And then it's run my bank account ass. dry. Yeah, no, it's ass. <laughs> Oh, uh, dastardly serial killers stealing each other's collect call accounts. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a Victor five on the phone. And then <laughs> the end of the movie, the plot twist is, is that all of the letters of his name are an anagram of scam likely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the penguin gets uh, brought down because he did a he did a collect call to the Joker as a joke, and then he left it for three hundred dollars and never paid the fine. <laughs> 
such an evil man. Oh man, it's good that even in the whenever this takes place, that people still run by the kung fu principle of yeah, <laughs> one at we're, a time. <laughs> we're not all gonna just gang up on him. Well, it's more that they they do sometimes gang up on you, especially. Well, this is something they added in Arkham City over Asylum. Um, you can do counter attacks on more than one move at a time. I don't know if that mechanic is an origin, though. Um, oh, you can do three in night. I know that. Yeah, much. yeah. Like they'll they'll all attack in like up to two or three at a time, and you hit the counter attack button one, two, three times, and you'll catch all of them. And the counter attack is when the spider sense goes off, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Although, <laughs> yeah, there are difficulty modes where the spider sense doesn't appear, so you have to actually watch the enemy's movements and make sure you're keeping an eye on which enemy is attacking you with what method to, because you can't always counterattack everything. You have to dodge or use your cape. It, is there, gets... like, a different counterattack if somebody has a knife versus just using their... I uh, think uh, so, yes. yes. The, the knife, I think you have to for use For blades, you have to... Now, for uh, knives, you have to... Ba you have to dodge while holding back. Oh, so right. you get out of the way. For shields, you have to... Yeah, and, and with the counterattack emblems on, this is signified by different colors, like the blue okay. icons. It's just a things. basic counter. Yeah, blue you can, blue is a basic counter. Yellow, I think, is the knife. Red is yeah. you can't block you can't this, you can't counter it. So get the fuck out of the way, out. or stun them with your cape or something. Um, yeah. It's like it, it, it it's kind of limited sounding on paper because there's only a few different enemy types. It gets pretty interesting when you're dealing with a whole bunch of them at once in different combinations though, which is what makes like the arena challenges in these games so fun to try and master. Is obviously for completionism or super frustrated oh, just Well, get yeah, there by. are a few that that are pretty frustrating because you you got to get you got to get your rank 3 medals for completion, right? But but if you miss it by 100 points, you got to do it again. Yeah, you you come in just under the score, and then you got to do the whole thing again, and then you're frustrated, so you do even worse. <laughs> it's uh well, I did actually complete uh, Arkham Asylum um, fully. I 100 percented so. the first three games. I did not do night because fuck the Riddler stuff in that game. I I gave up the, I gave up trying to complete the Riddler stuff at City Man. <laughs> There's too much of it. I love the stuff no, they. I, I, it wasn't even just the Riddler stuff much. at night. All, the, all just the malicious stuff was so boring. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is the malicious the stuff stuff you do at the Batmobile? It's a lot it's of things. Uh, Ar 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 uh, Arkham City and Arkham Knight and Arkham Origin. I appreciate them going like full open world ish. Even if City, I, I think City was the best one because you know. Uh, the scope and size of it fit this playstyle more than Origins and Knight do. But at the same time, I'm a little cynical about the way they approached the open world objectives. It's all very... Hmm, how do I put this? Uh, in a way that doesn't sound overly disdainful. It's the same thing that every other open world game does. A bunch of mindless collectibles and, you know, some busy work. Some really half baked side quests. Um I always call it busy yeah. work. It's just I mean, this is Batman. You could go really crazy on the kind of side quests that you that that, that you cram into these games. You could make fucking Batman Arkham Yakuza edition if you wanted. And it would be really good. I, mean, I, I think City did the best job with that <laughs> yeah. as a result. But when you when you, when you want me to collect like forty pieces of Penguin's like tax evasion documents, it's like <laughs> oh, okay, this is, I don't know if feel this is really needed. I don't think like even Ooh, out. Can you find the Riddler's cooked book? <laughs> <laughs> Riddler's cooked. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, um, they could have they could have done more with it in the moment to moment gameplay, and they didn't. So I'm a, I'm a bit disappointed with the direction they took the series after that. 